I have a Google News alert for Bitcoin that comes to my inbox every single day. And so I get to see what the mainstream media as well as the independent media is saying about Bitcoin. And unsurprisingly, there's a big contrast because we know when I say mainstream media, we mean government sponsored corporate media as opposed to independent media that answers at least somewhat more directly to the audience and consumers. And so I have seen so many articles just saying that Bitcoin is a scam, a fraud, it's about to die. I, so many, just even contradictory criticisms, totally out of touch with reality. And, and I've read hundreds of these stories now. So I, I'm, I'm pretty confident saying that of, of all the at least sort of credible ones, I have found the most offensive, irresponsible, delusional propaganda hate piece on Bitcoin. And I am proud. If I had an award, I would be like, here, let me give you, uh, I know, I'll give you, I'll give you a Bitcoin. No, okay, I'll give you a, uh, a Satoshi. Yes, a Satoshi as an award for Mr. Robert Kuttner, contributor, co-founder, and co-editor of The American Prospect. And this is on HuffingtonPost.com, The Bitcoin Hoax. We should hardly be surprised that Bitcoin is on a wild speculative ride. That's the essence of privatized credit creation. All right. Imagine an unholy alliance between cyber utopians, money launderers, financial fraudsters, and ultra free marketers. <gasps> what sort of toxic contraption might they dream up? That would be a Bitcoin. I'm sorry, I don't know what voice to do this in. Robert Kuttner is probably like, <laughs> can you imagine an unholy alliance between cyber utopians, money launderers, financial fraudsters, and ultra free marketers? I, I'm sorry, that's just, <laughs> that's the kind of like, I, I, I have to picture like, this is, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing Gollum here, all right? So, um, cyber utopians, okay? People who believe that the internet can make the world a better place, yeah. Okay, I'm, I guess I'm a cyber utopian. Utopian. Am I a money launderer? Uh, well, that's an interesting question for me personally, but uh, money launders in general, right? What you're trying to do is, uh, like, and I'm, I'm <laughs> there's a great office space reference here, taking money from one thing and, and concealing it through an intermediary, right? What is, they had, to, they had to look up money laundering, right? So money laundering, if you are concealing the, the source of, of funds, uh, ill-gotten gains, you're doing it in order to avoid reporting it to the government or being caught for a crime, right? But if the gains, the the you know, were were gained through fair, free trade, you know, you sold someone drugs on the Silk Road and you gave them the drugs and they gave you the money and now you have the Bitcoin and you want to be able to, you know, launder it. You want to be able to use it for something else without people knowing where it came from. You're just a defender of financial privacy, and the person you're hiding it from is the United States government, who is trying to steal it from you illegitimately. Financial fraudsters. Um, now, I, now, yes, there are certainly some financial fraudsters and, and criminals who have latched on to the new Bitcoin monetary system, is a cryptocurrency system, if, if you will. Um, but yeah, they, they, they're not the ones who came up with this. I mean, if you were a financial fraudster, if you wanted to rip people off with a monetary system, you wouldn't come up with Bitcoin, you'd come up with the US dollar. Something that the, the Federal Reserve System can create out of thin air as much as they want and force people at gunpoint to use. No, that's the financial fraud here. And then ultra free marketeers. Whew. Now, now, a free market is one where there is no violent interference with your self-ownership, with your right to own property, your right to freedom, uh, to have freedom of association freedom of trade, right? Uh, with, without so, so anytime you have violence in something, it's not a free market. So an ultra free marketeer would be someone who's really, really, really opposed to violence. Yeah, sounds scary and evil to me. So uh, 
back to uh, back to our, our propagandist Robert here. Bobby says, remind me, what is the problem for which Bitcoin is the supposed solution? More on that in a moment. For the time being, the immediate Bitcoin problem is that speculators in the virtual currency have been on a wild ride with the price of a Bitcoin rising from under $1,000 to as high as over $18,000 and back down to $12,000 before setting, setting for the moment around... Oh typo there. Settling, I assume he means, for the moment around 14000 This makes a few early betters very rich, but exactly what real economic good does that do? Uh, okay, so m making people rich is bad. What, are you, you pro-poverty, Robert? Is that is that the, the position you're taking? Are you anti-risk, anti-speculation? You don't want people to be able to trade freely? You don't want prices to go up and down? Like you, I don't know. I don't see the problem here. Okay, in case you missed it, here's the pitch. Paying with checks, credit cards, or bank transfers leaves a trail. But there is no trail with Bitcoin. In a world of drug traffickers, terrorists, and Kremlin weaponizing all things cyber, this is supposed to be a plus. Say what? Oh, Robert, you're so clever here. Yes, it, well, it does leave a trail, but with Bitcoin, the trail is optional. It's, it's whatever you want. So... Yeah, I, I love how you're, you're, you're bringing this in to, to scare people like, oh my God, there's a new monetary system and people are using it for criminal things like, like uh, trafficking drugs, selling drugs to people who want to consume them. And you go, <clears throat> okay, um, let's, let's look at the United States dollar as a system. Uh, it's been used in every evil financial transaction in the world um, from its inception until the creation of Bitcoin, or at least it's been the primary currency of the world for all of its evil. And of course, you could yeah, include other fiat currencies in that, right? But guilt by association, Robert? Come on, you can do better than that. Conventional forms of money, other than cash, have transaction costs. Your checkbook, your credit cards, not to mention digital forms of money transfer, such as PayPal and Venmo, nick you for fees. But there is no fee with Bitcoin. Okay. So, Robert, just, I, do you, where do you have credibility? Do, do, like, just that you can write an article on, on Bitcoin and not understand the basics of how Bitcoin transactions work with fees to the network. Like, just, actually, if you manage your money carefully, you can reduce credit card and checking account fees to next to nothing. Thanks to its ingenious tamper-proof blockchain crypto technology, don't ask. Okay, so this is this is perfect. He's really, I mean, he's he wants his readers to stay dumb and ignorant, and this is what most of the people demeaning Bitcoin want. He literally said, okay, so thanks to its ingenious tamper-proof blockchain, puts that in quotes, crypto technology, not in quotes, parentheses, don't ask, don't ask, don't ask, just don't ask. Don't ask. Just, just trust me to tell you that the bad guys are bad and don't ask about anything about how they work. Like, you know, really? Don't ask. Like, hey, here's a revolutionary new technology that's created a new monetary system that makes smart contracts and new cryptocurrencies possible. And you just don't ask. Bitcoin is absolutely safe. If you believe that, I have a Russian bridge for you to buy. And unlike nasty governments, which do things like managing the money supply or preventing destabilizing speculation, Bitcoin is independent of any government. This is also billed as a plus. If I had a bigger forehead to facepalm here, oh my gosh. So thank you government for managing the monetary supply. Uh, yeah, at the behest of bankers and Wall Street, really? Oh, that's so great. Preventing destabilizing speculation. Uh, the stock market is a giant bubble. The housing market is a giant bubble. And, and, and interest rates have nothing to do with that set by government. You, sir, are in denial. Or you're, I, like, I can't tell. I, honestly, Robert, I, honestly, I can't tell. Are you, are you evil or are you a moron? Are, are you really just a, a propagandist for the evil corrupt forces behind government, of government, or are, are you really this dumb that you, that you can't check your facts, that you don't ask, or you encourage other people to not ask, that you have so many factual mistakes in this article? So, the number of Bitcoins in circulation is strictly limited to $21 million. No, no it's not. And the market cap of Bitcoin is already in the billions. What are you talking about? No, 21 million Bitcoins. 
not $21 million. Holy crap, this guy's dumb. Or he thinks you're dumb one way or the other. That was the claim anyway. Well, there are now hundreds of other digital currencies and thanks to the miracle of leveraging and speculation in Bitcoins, the true sum is far higher. Exactly how much higher, we don't really know. Now in fairness, central banks and bank regulators did a pretty good job of managing the money supply for a half century after the Great Depression. But then they messed up big time. <laughs> In the 1980s, regulators started getting captured by fintech wizards. People not unlike Bitcoin enthusiasts who started inventing new forms of infinite leverage. It took about 20 years for this brew to become truly toxic. The result was the collapse of 2008. So, Robert, what you're saying is that you would rather have a centrally controlled, centrally planned economy that occasionally screws up massively rather than a monetary system that is actually able to flow with the needs of the market without the distortions created by a central authority. All right. We have a lot of work to do in order to return to the business of financial regulation and good monetary policy to democratic control. But if you think the task can be entrusted to an algorithm, consider this. It's an old idea. Economist Milton Friedman and Friedrich Hayek advocated putting the money supply on autopilot. Uh, no, they, they were saying make it subject to, you know, the, the market, to the, you know, the, the, the invisible hand, the collective wisdom of millions of people interacting peacefully, as opposed to, you know, one small group of authority figures forcibly imposing their will on everybody else. Whew. But if that policy had been in effect when the financial collapse of 2008 occurred and the economy had been left to the tender mercies of the invisible hand, much less the invisible cyber hand, all of the banks would have gone bust and the economy, instead of experiencing the Great Recession, would have been in total collapse. <laughs> ben Bernanke, a Friedman enthusiast who was chairman of the Federal Reserve at the time, acknowledged that a hands-off policy was the opposite of what was needed. This is like a, a bully who's got you by the collar, like punching you in the face, you know, over and over again, going, you know what's wrong with this scenario? We're just not hitting you hard enough. You know, if we, we just need, we need more central control. Yeah, sorry, sorry, does this, does this hurt? Does this hurt you? Does your face hurting right now because I'm punching you? Well, if we just punch a little harder, then, then we'll get past the pain, yeah. <sighs> So the next time the wizards of speculation produce yet another financial collapse, who are you going to call? Bitcoin. Sorry, there's nobody home. Yes, it's decentralized. That's kind of the point. It's a system that exists to serve humanity that everyone has equitable access to. And of course, oh, you control freaks and central planners can't possibly abide that. I realize I'm an awkward company here. The CEO of JP Morgan Chase, Jamie Dimon, who helped bring us the financial collapse, doesn't like Bitcoin. The big banks don't like the competition, right? As Diamond said, quote, no government will ever support a virtual currency that goes around borders and doesn't have the same controls. It's not going to happen. And it's true. No government will ever support Bitcoin, except maybe some small minor ones that can be bought off by smaller people. But uh, no, they're not. And, and for Jamie Diamond to say this is to, to give up, to say, oh, yes, whatever government wants, government gets. Diamond is right that the world's central bankers should shut down virtual currencies as both an invitation to money laundering as a th and as a threat to monetary stability. See, well, what Bitcoin has done, what, what we, the Bitcoin community, have done that is so brilliant is that we have made money possible in a form that is truly, purely information. And for you to take a stand against Bitcoin is to take a stand against freedom of information, is to take a stand against freedom of speech. We have found a way to communicate, store, and exchange value without you, without central authorities. And of course, they don't like that. Some central banks, such as the Bank of Japan, are planning to create official digital currencies for cheap or free transactions, but in a context of, context of regulated monetary policy. Europe has long had a less whiz-bang version of this known as hero transfers, in which people instruct their banks to make payments on their behalf to vendors' banks rather than writing checks. And if the issue is more competition, the remedy is to break up the big banks, not return to a digitized version of 19th century boom and bust credit creation. I may agree with Diamond on Bitcoin. I agree with Steve Bannon on not going to nuclear war with North Korea, but that doesn't mean I support either Bannon's racism or Diamond's predatory banking. Oh, oh, wait a second. But you do, Robert. You do support predatory banking. Now, maybe not Diamond's predatory banking, but you support the predatory banking of governments, of centrally controlled currencies.
In sum, we should hardly be surprised that Bitcoin is on a wild speculative ride. That's the essence of privatized credit creation. And if you think this gambling is zero sum and victimless, kindly Google these. Panic of 1837, Panic of 1857, Panic of 1873, Panic of 1893, Panic of 1907, and of course the Great Depression of 1929 to 1940, and the collapse of 2008. Google them. Please Google them and you can be as afraid as I am. But wait a second. Bitcoin was not involved in any of those. Sorry, but Cyber Santa is an illusion. Wishing us all a Merry Christmas in a solvent new year. Now, what's worse is that this man, Robert Kuttner, not only is co-editor of the American Prospect, he is a professor at Brandeis University's Heller School's forthcoming book is Can Democracy Survive Global Capitalism? And you wonder why safe space seeking American college students are so confused these days. Now, I would hardly be living up to my own standards if I just was going to sit here and uh, be critical of Mr. Kuttner. So I will extend an invitation as well if um, Mr. Kuttner, if you would like to come on Adam versus the Man and you would like to uh, do an interview about this, I would be happy to talk to you. In fact, I will make sure that our producer sends you an email about this very, very soon. So.